Hi, it's Mina, and this is another dessert video featuring a bunch of unique and fun recipes that are delicious, but also low-key good for you, or at least better for you than the average treat. Even though there is nothing wrong with having a super indulgent dessert, and I've got plenty of recipes on that topic on my channel. I will link a few down below if you're interested. But yeah, I gotta say I do like the challenge of creating a dessert that is nutritious in some ways, but also still tastes really good. So yeah, that's what this is. And I'm really happy with the recipes that made the cut for today. For example, these um, spelt cinnamon rolls. They're still really hot and I should not be touching this like that. Ow. <laughs> First off, we have these no-bake, gluten-free brownie bars. This recipe uses rice cakes as the flour, which gives them this toasty, almost popcorn-esque flavor. Let some pitted dates soak in some water, hot water, for about 10 minutes. Grab a food processor and add some brown rice cakes. Mine are slightly salted as well, but that's fine. Actually, that's positive. Blend until fine and powdery. Transfer the flour to a bowl. Now drain the dates, and then add those to the now empty food processor, followed by some natural nut butter, going for peanut, and some vanilla. Blend this up once more, scraping down the sides as needed until you have this thick, chunky sort of paste. Then add some salt and some unsweetened cacao powder and of course the rice cake flour. After looking at the texture here, I also added a bit of water. Only about a tablespoon. It should hold together easily when you pinch it in between your fingers. Now this goes into a small to medium baking pan or a casserole dish, pressing down the mixture tightly with your fingers. Even though we're not gonna bake this, it does help to have the parchment paper here so you can lift this out more easily later. Put this into the fridge while you put together the chocolate ganache type topping. For this topping, melt together a little bit of vegan butter or coconut oil, add some vanilla, take it off the heat, and mix in some liquid sweetener, such as agave, maple, or date syrup, or ice syrup, and some unsweetened cacao. So we're basically kind of making our own chocolate here. Pour this over the rice cake mixture, spreading it evenly, and then place this into the fridge. Ideally overnight, but for at least two hours, I would say. I served this with some iced matcha. This was really good. And wow, I've, got, I've gotten so used to the short hair now that this is really weird to look at. Moving on to some pumpkin pie mousse. First off, I roasted a small Hokkaido pumpkin. Because I think some people are gonna ask, I've never tried this recipe with canned pumpkin before, but I would assume that that also works. Although I am always a big proponent of making your own pumpkin puree rather than using the store-bought stuff because I think homemade tastes better. So measure out the amount of roasted or canned pumpkin that you need for this recipe and transfer that to a food processor. Next, add some liquid sweetener, cinnamon, and the other pumpkin pie spices, pinch of salt, some vanilla, a bit of plant-based cream or plant-based cuisine as it's often referred to in the supermarkets, and then blend. Now in a large mixing bowl, place some aquafaba, aka chickpea water. Now using a hand mixer, whip this up until it's as firm as you can get it to be. So for at least five minutes, I would say. Gently fold the pumpkin mixture and the chickpea mixture together and give this a quick taste test, see if it needs some more sweetener. But there you go, divide this between a bunch of tiny glasses or ramekins. Now you can serve this right away, but this really nice, airy, 
more moussey sort of consistency will only appear after at least six hours in the fridge. And I would also suggest that you serve this with maybe some cookie crumbles or some granola if you want to go the healthier route. It's very creamy, so I feel like it does need some sort of crunch in there too. Next up, we have these cozy oat apple cupcakes with cream cheese coconut frosting. Possibly my favorite recipe from today, possibly. Grab a muffin tin and grease each mold thoroughly with some coconut oil or vegan butter or line it with some muffin liners. Also make sure the oven is preheating to 180 degrees Celsius. Now for the cupcake batter, combine the chia seeds, non-dairy milk, vinegar, and vanilla in a large mixing bowl and let that sit for about five minutes. Meanwhile, inside a smaller bowl, combine all the dry ingredients. That's oats, spelt flour, baking powder, salt, cinnamon, and cornstarch. Combine the wet and the dry. And then allow this to sit for another five minutes. In the meantime, cut up an apple. Cut it into smaller bite-sized pieces. No need to peel it, although you can do that if you prefer. Divide the mixture evenly between the muffin molds. And let these guys bake for around 25 minutes. They won't puff up too much, but that's actually ideal for cupcakes because we need a flat top for a frosting. You could go for a super simple and lazy topping of nut butter. Instead of nut butter, you could do vegan yogurt or cream cheese. Frosting attempt number two. This might just be my new favorite type of cake frosting. Since there is no powdered sugar in this icing, there's also no chance of it becoming grainy. It's just so smooth. Measure the coconut oil and allow that to melt in a small saucepan. Meanwhile, in a large mixing bowl, place some room temperature vegan cream cheese, some soy or oat cream, and some liquid sweetener such as agave or maple syrup. Whip it up using a hand mixer. Now carefully pour in the liquid oil. Now once again, using the hand mixer, combine everything, but again, be careful. Whip it up until it looks something like this, and then place this into the fridge for at least one hour. Even though I'm also not the biggest fan of coconut flavor in desserts, I genuinely really like this. Like the mixture of coconut and cream cheese is really, really nice. I ended up taking these with me to a park, which was not the best idea. <laughs> this icing, by the way, is heavily inspired by one of Artemis's recipes. I will link her recipe blog down below if you want to check it out. So many of you told me to try the viral TikTok date bark recipe, where basically you cover a bunch of dates with peanut butter and nuts and chocolate. It inspired me to create something, something a bit more fall, autumn-y, swapping out the dates for some soft apples. Soft dried apples, not the crunchy type. Turning this into fall apple bark since this is natural peanut butter, it kind of goes everywhere, but that's okay. We're gonna freeze everything together anyway. Chopped walnuts or pecans would be even better here. Then just drizzle everything with the melted chocolate. And if you want, you can finish this off with some cinnamon and some coarse sea salt. Place this into the freezer until hardened and then serve. I don't know if anybody cares about what I'm reading at the moment, but I am currently rereading this book. It's just a really fun villain origin story. It is so interesting to read, especially as a Hunger Games fan, and there's so much more romance than I had expected. Anyway, that's it for this uh, random book club segment. Let's go back to the recipes. 
Last but not least, the cinnamon rolls. This is a small batch of tiny spelt cinnamon rolls. In a small to medium bowl, combine some hot water with cold milk to get to a lukewarm temperature. Add some vanilla, some liquid sweetener, and a bit of vegetable oil. Sprinkle over the dry active yeast. No need to mix, you can just set that aside someplace warm. Now grab the dry ingredients and mix those together in a separate small bowl. Combine wet and dry with a spoon first and then switch to your hands. Knead the dough for at least five minutes. Having your hands either lightly oiled or floured is really helpful whilst kneading. And then place this into a bowl and let it sit for 15 to 30 minutes someplace warm. Next, on a lightly floured surface, fold this out into a small rectangle. Now spread the dough with some nut butter. I like cashew butter here, but almond would be great too. You can of course also use regular plant-based butter. Sprinkle this with some cinnamon and a sugar of your choosing. Then cut this into two to three cinnamon rolls. I prefer doing two. and place the rolls into small, lightly greased ramekins. Then put those into the oven and let them bake for around 15 minutes. That is pretty much it. You can serve them right away. If you wanna go the more healthy route, then top them with some fresh yogurt. You could make the coconut frosting from the cupcake recipe. I bet those two taste amazing together. That would be all from me today. I hope you enjoyed this little recipe selection. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I don't know if you guys know, but I have a cookbook out. It's called All Day Vegan. It's written in English and in German, and you can get it anywhere online or in bookstores. It has over a hundred really, really amazing recipes. Um, yeah, check out the description for more information on the book, and I will see you soon. Bye.